Hey guys, this is Eddie, and welcome back to Learning to Program. Last time we were going over if statements and if else and uh, else if and uh, yeah, um, that was great. So we are gonna now go over wow loops. Now looping is important, and theoretically, if you could write a wow loop in a language, you could write any program out there in existence. Uh, it would be inefficient, it would be bad, but you could do it. So let's 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 think about what they are. Uh, I'm gonna give you an example. Uh, I equals zero. While I is less than five do print i i equals i plus one give me a minute and i will explain this and let's run this okay so first things first you should know this by now i equals zero that is just simply declaring a variable with uh, the value of zero now while this is the while loop we're talking about and then an argument just like we had for the if statements it is something that boils down to true or false uh, and we have i is less than five and do this okay now just like the if statement this is only going to run if the argument is true okay so if we treat this like an if statement let's theoretically walk through it in slow motion if it was an if statement if i is less than five which it is because i is zero then it's going to print i so it's going to print zero and then set i equal to i plus one so i is equal to one and then and then it's going to be done. Okay? That's if it an if statement. The same exact thing would happen if it was a while loop, if which it is a while loop, except because i is true, it is going to go back again and check if it is true uh, and do it again if it is still true. So, i is equal to 0, which means it is less than 5. So it prints 0 and it adds 1 to adds one now we're up to one is one less than five yes it is we can look at the outputs down here it does it again is two less than five yes is three less than five yes is four less than five yes and then it said is five less than five and five is not less than five five is equal to five so it didn't print it and it didn't add one so it continued looping until the argument became false Alright, so that is a very simple uh, thing. That's a very simple example. Uh, let's let's write a new one. Um, let's see. What's another example? Uh, S equals. Uh, go. Well, S equals equals go. Do program uh, print. All right, we're going to do this quickly. Program is in an infinite loop. Okay, and wait. Oh, and then of course, as always, like I always forget. And now, let's do.
do this quick before it eats up my memory, which it should take a while, so we're not in too big of a rush, but you can see down here it is continuously rapidly firing printing out. This program is in an infinite loop, and that is because S is equal to go. W while S is equal to go, do this, and end the loop. If that's true, do it again. If it's true, do it again. And as you can see, nothing is changing S. So this is the danger of a while loop, is you can fall into infinite loops because you might not change any th the, the outcome of the argument. It might always boil down to true. And there are some cases when you want that. Updating the screen when you're maybe, say, coding a game. Updating the screen. You want that to continuously happen. You don't want it to end after a certain number of updates. You want it to update the screen continuously to draw new frames. So you do want it sometimes. You might want it to happen at a certain speed. You might want it to happen as fast as possible. But but in general, you don't want it because it's going to just eat up your memory and you're not gonna your com your program's gonna get stuck. So let's stop this thing. I wonder how. That's not gonna help. Okay. It is stopped, but it queued up so many prints, it's going to keep printing for a while, uh, but it is stopped. Never mind, it wasn't stopped. Alright, now it's stopped. Alright, so... That is actually surprisingly all there is to say about while loops that I can think of. I thought it was going to be more complicated than that. Alright, so let's write... Um, let's see, what's going to require while loops? I guess... The... Uh... Secret number one will. But that one's going to require inputs too, which we haven't covered yet, so we're not going to do that one. Um, should have planned this out before. I, I really thought this was going to take longer. Um, hmm, interesting. Let's see. Well, let's work on our math skills in that case with the tip calculator. Okay. Starting fresh. After we write a few of these programs, we're going to co cover something called function, which is going to make these programs much easier and actually usable. Uh, so, for those of you who are already programmers and you're like, what are you doing? We're getting to it. I just want to introduce people the power of the basics. All right, um, the power of simply not getting complex with the code. And even though it requires more writing and less organization or something, it still works and it's still usable. So, okay. Here we go. So, we need two things to calculate the tip. We need, and you're going to start to notice that I use very long variable names when I find it useful. So, cost of meal equals, let's just say it was a $24 meal. And percent tip um, and we are going to put that as a decimal uh, if 1 equals 100% and 0 equals 0% and 0.1 would equal 10% and 0.2 would be 20% so 0.2 is a 20% tip and that's what we're going to go by and of course because we are setting these as variables we can always just change these values in the code here when we want to, and we can then rerun the program and recalculate this tip. 
So, okay. Um, the best way to do it would be to then write, put the number, put uh, tip. Uh, okay. Next, we're gonna make a boolean, and it's gonna call. It's gonna be called done equals false. Okay. Now while done equals equals false, do the following. Okay. Put end there. So while done is false. So when the user is not done. Uh, do this loop and it's gonna say cost oh wait that's silly alright this isn't gonna use while loops I was trying to we work them in somehow but we don't need to <clears throat> okay so now we just say tip equals cost of meal times percent tip and then maybe we'll say total cost equals cost of meal plus plus sign yeah there we go plus tip and then we can print total cost all right let's let's talk briefly and explain this I'm gonna add some comments too that might be helpful <clears throat> now one thing we haven't covered yet is how to input things so that, that means how to bring up a little a little box that I can then it actually would appear down here in the console where I can type in numbers. So until we cover that, we will just be editing the source code. We'll probably actually cover that next time because it's going to be needed uh, for some stuff. But yeah, so yeah, these are the inputs. Uh, this is not needed anymore. This is the logic and math, and this is the output, okay? Nope, oh, where'd you go? <clears throat> Sometimes I save it and it disappears. Okay, so the input. This is what the user would come in and, and change. It would put the cost of the meal, the percent of the tip, uh, and let's change this to 25 so we can see that it's working easier because just using numbers so 20% is the same as dividing by 5 so the answer it, when it prints something out it should print out 5 actually let's try this your meal plus tip will cost remember that concatenation I was talking about your meal plus tip will cost concatenation and then the cost so now it's going to print out on the same line the words and then the number that's something we should have covered before I forgot um, but hey, that makes this exercise all the more important. Let's run this. So, 25 is the cost of the meal. Divide it by 5 to get a 20% tip. Add those two together and you get a $30, $30 meal. Now, what if, what if we had a differently $24 costing meals different? It's going to cost $28.80. Okay, you can see how this is working out. Uh, now, what if we actually wanted to tip 25% because we're super nice? 
Now it would cost 30 again, but if the meal was that $25 meal we were talking about before, now it will cost $31.25. So we can see how we can edit these inputs, maintain the same logic, the same math, the same little algorithm and operations, uh, and get the outcome. So that's the power of variables. You don't just want to fire up uh, Lua and type in 25 times 0.25 and then when you change one of those values when you say well what if it was a $30 meal type in again 30 times 0.25 no you don't want to do that you want to type it once and then you know type all the math once and then just change the inputs and it changes the entire file uh, or when it runs through the file again it runs through everything uh, and do it for you with the new values <clears throat> so uh, that's a little that's our first complete program and by, there's a lot more you could do you could have it so that like I said rather than coming in and editing this file and then rerunning it you could have it when you run the file it brings up a little little text box for you to type in the cost of the meal and the percent of the tip you could also add a GUI, so it has its own window. What a GUI is, is a GUI. It stands for Graphical User Interface. It is, you know, everything. Like, th these buttons are GUI objects. These, this menu, this window here, uh, that's a GUI. If you, you could create one of those, have them push the buttons to, uh, you know, have, it, have them type in the spots in that GUI and then a button that says execute and then you push that button, it'll print out on that GUI the answer. Um, so you could take this a lot farther, but basically, as far as bare bones goes, this is a completed program. So this is, you know, how you can get things done using these simple tools. Now we're going to start building on top of these things. We're going to start uh, talking about some higher up programs. This is where I, this is my fourth, fifth, third, somewhere around that episode. And I'm hoping that someone by now will have suggested some programs. I have, I've recorded these all in one sitting. So I haven't actually seen uh, what, every, what other people are wanting yet, but I'm hoping by now some people have suggested some things, uh, asked some questions, I can play off of them, we have some more to do, I have some more programs in mind, but in general, after we do functions, as far as Lua is concerned, we're done, if we were doing another program, we'd be continuing on, but we're not, because uh, Lua is not technically object-oriented, uh, you can emulate object orientedness almost completely. Uh, you can get all the all the important parts minus a few, um, but yeah. And then from then on out, this series will last as long as I get feedback or can come up with my own ideas. And then after this series is done, we move on to using a particular 3D engine, which is uh, written for Lua, not 3D, sorry, uh, 2D game engine, we're written for Lua, that will we will be able to write some simple 3D games with. Um, but that's way in advance. For right now, focus on using this these little maths, and, you know, starting with some values, performing some math operations on them and printing out the output. Maybe you could work up a calculator so that you start off with two numbers and it'll add them, might subtract them, multiply them, and divide them, and print out all the results for you. That might be a nice little homework assignment, so to speak. Um, but uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned. Remember, please keep... Please give me some challenges in the comment section below. Uh, and aside from that, I will talk to you guys later.